Uh, hello, my name's Jess uh, and I'm a resident of Wambara, which is a small suburb in the northern Illawarra. Uh, I'm a member of Stop CSG Illawarra, but I just want to tell you first how I ended up doing what I'm doing and why I'm here today. So at the end of 2010, I found out that coal seam gas exploration had been approved <coughs> in my local community. Test drilling had already happened in 2004 and 2005, and in 2009, exploration was approved. This was a massive concern to me because I knew not enough about coal seam gas mining. I was hearing risks in the media, uh, and at the same time, companies without government telling me, without companies telling me, uh, this was going ahead. And in the Illawarra, we're talking about wells all in and around our drinking water catchment. For people at the back here. Now, from the outset, the campaign that I'm a part of, our issue has been with government, not with the companies. The reality is, the companies are acting within a legal framework that the government has set. The approvals have been granted by government, the development applications have been granted by government, and so that is where our focus has been. Now, sometimes it's a little bit hard going after the other speakers. Uh, it's good in a sense because you know what to respond to, but at the same time it's hard because there are a lot of accusations just then about mistruths. Unfortunately, they weren't concrete. It was just that we were saying mistruths. So I'd like to know exactly what we're saying, that they're accusing us of being untrue. Moreover, I would actually suggest that everyone here who's worried about that go to our website. For every claim that we make, there is peer-reviewed scientific evidence that we point to. We're not about making ambit claims. We want the facts. That's what we campaign around. We campaign specifically for two things. One, an immediate freeze on the industry. Two, so that we can actually get the full facts before any more drilling can happen. Now to go through some of the facts that I think are incredibly important. Coal seam gas mining always involves contaminated water. This is necessarily the case because to get the gas out, you have to draw water out of the coal seam. The gas is trapped there by that water, and it, so it needs to be extracted. Now that water is high in salt, it's high in methane and it can contain toxic and radioactive compounds and heavy metals. The industry also nationally uses and pollutes large quantities of fresh water. And finally, the industry depletes and damages aquifers. That almost goes without saying. If you're drawing water out of the ground, you're depleting groundwater systems. Now to go through some figures, which is incredibly important, how much water are we talking about? So a country that regularly goes into drought, exactly how much water are we talking about? The federal government's water group, and this is based on modelling from industry estimates, says that the industry each year will use 5,400 gigalitres. Now that sounds a bit abstract to me, but for comparison, households Australia-wide every year use 1,872 gigalitres. So the industry will use 5,400 gigalitres of water a year. In addition, we're talking about salty water. So we have this byproduct. Once water is treated with reverse osmosis, we've got this salt that we need to deal with. How much salt are we talking about? Same um, government group estimates 154 million tonnes of salt over 30 years. Now again, that seems like an abstract figure, but uh, Queensland Gas Company recently received approval to build a salt pit the size of four MCGs. Santos considered dumping at sea or transporting to a waste facility, but found it would require, and this is from their documents, 200 tankers operating 24 hours a day, each travelling a distance of 500 kilometres. So it was ruled out for economic reasons. The Queensland Government has asked the industry to come up with a salt plan by 2013. So before we know what to do with the waste product, we've got an industry that's producing waste. Now Jai actually said BTEX has been banned. This isn't true. It's in a draft policy at the moment. And you can't ban BTEX. So you can ban BTEX as a drilling additive, but BTEX can naturally occur in coal seam. So you cannot prevent BTEX from being present when you draw water out of that coal seam. BTEX is a, a group of toxic chemicals. But we need to talk facts on the ground. These can be hypothetical risks. The industry can claim that on paper it can operate safely. These, these, this water can be treated and disposed of safely. But the reality is we're getting spilled. So to go through some examples, in June last year, Origin Energy and ConocoPhillips were approved to release wastewater into the Condamine River. 
this water had been treated with reverse osmosis. But it still contained unsafe levels of cyanide, chloroform, lead, boron, aluminium, mercury, silver, chlorine, I, I won't keep naming them, but this was, they were given permission to do this by the Queensland Government. Up to eight Olympic swimming pools per day. 17 chemicals at levels considered to be toxic. Soil testing in the Pilliga just last month found arsenic, lead, chromium, salts and petrochemicals had leaked from CSG water storage areas. Now the site, just a few other examples, there are many across the country and I can't go into all of them, but a few close to, close to home. Camden, last year, there was a fracking well blowout. Water spewed up into the air and sprayed over surrounding properties. The company didn't report it until an anti-CSG campaigner filmed it and put it on YouTube. In addition, we found that coal seam gas companies in Queensland, when we had the huge floods in Queensland, they released wastewater into floodwaters. This came out end of last year. These are huge concerns because the reality is water treatment and water disposal is an incredibly expensive process uh, and one that uh, industries will make more money if they do not engage in this process. Moreover, the facts on the ground are that we're getting toxic leaks as a result of this industry. <coughs> the second big issue is methane. So I know that Oakdale, like the Illawarra, is bushfire prone. Now it's very hard to actually get facts about exactly what we're talking about with methane. But the fact is, wellhead processing plants, pipelines, they leak. They leak to varying degrees and it depends on maintenance, obviously. But the most comprehensive study we've got is of a Colorado shale gas field in the US. So similar infrastructure, but we are talking about shale, a different underground system you're getting the gas out of. Different regulatory environment too. They found a 4% leakage rate across the field. Now, methane is a highly explosive and potent greenhouse gas. The industry also has a large industrial footprint, and this is incredibly important, because so far all we've heard is about the exploration well that's been drilled here. But there is something incredibly wrong when exploration can be approved before you assess whether or not the environment is suitable for production. A production field means a wellhead every 300 to 900 metres, all connected by roads and pipelines. You need to truck out or pipe out all of the wastewater, all of the gas, so you're talking about bringing onto your roads, lots of truck movements and, and heavy, indus heavy industry. It has an enormous industrial footprint. And I ask you the question, would this change the landscape in your community and in my community? And did anyone else stop and ask us whether we wanted that? <coughs> Moreover, it's not just about this industry in local communities. We're also talking about this industry on a national scale, which is incredibly important because this industry requires a whole bunch of supporting infrastructure. And to give just one example, it's largely an export industry there's a, 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 um, a harbour being fixed in Gladstone at the moment, and they're actually very locally. And have we let her finish? And have we let her finish? Uh, excuse me. Uh, please have the same courtesy you had for everybody else. Thank you. Sorry, I actually want to address that for a moment. I'm concerned about this industry everywhere, not just in my community. I am worried about my drinking water. I'm worried about the area in which I live. But I'm incredibly worried that any worry, any community is actually facing these kind of spills, these kind of risks, before we actually get the information. Yeah. Moreover, I would say, and what I was about to say, is that as a result of this industry, they are currently dredging a section of Living Great Barrier Reef, something I think we feel enormous love and ownership of, not just the people of Gladstone. Yeah. Lastly, and I think this is the most important, is the process under which all of this has happened. I want to ask one question. Who here found out about coal seam gas mining because the government told you or because the company came and told you? 2GB. 2GB. Who here found out because campaigners went to media, campaigners came and put something in your letterbox, community members came and spoke to you? I think it's an outrageous situation where communities are finding out after the fact, after approval has been granted. Now while it's absolutely the case that petroleum exploration licences were issued, issued for, to, for, most, for where most people in New South Wales live, under the previous Labor government, the current government cannot absolve itself of responsibility. The reality is the development application for the well in Oakdale was approved under the current government. 
same as the final well approved in the Illawarra. It's weasel words to simply say it was an exploration licence under the previous government. The well was approved under the current government. Let's try one more thing. I think we have a right to ask the question, is it too much to expect from government that this be fully investigated, that it be shown to be safe before any drilling happens? I think it's a legitimate question to ask for independent information. This government, it says these things have already gone ahead, this government is in a position to freeze the industry until we get the facts and to put communities in the place of decision making. This government is in that position and they have not done it yet. But what I say to that is the power is in our hands. We're in a very difficult position when we have a government who is failing to do what is clearly needed, treat the industry until we get the facts on the ground. But at the end of the day, we have to act as responsible citizens, take responsibility for our water, for our health, for our environment and for intergenerational equity. Because we have to ensure the protection specifically of our drinking water catchment, but also for the development of this industry in this country. Thank you.